you guys think you know the answer to this question, comment down below. But if you don't, the answer to that question will be a little bit later in the video. So let's keep watching. Hi guys. So for today's craft, we're going to be making sponge water balls. Look, look at these things. They look so, look at these things. They look so fun. They're so fun. But first, let's get to the supplies. So you will need sponges, rubber bands. No, no don't, don't, don't do that. Don't You'll scissors. need scissors though. You're going to want to take your three sponges and you're going to take each one and you're going to cut it into thirds. So you get three little pieces of your sponge. And if you guys are having trouble cutting, easy. Just ask your parents for help and I'm sure they'd love to help you. And then, once you have all three of your sponges cut into thirds, you're going to stack them like this. Stack, stack, stack. And finally, you're going to take your sponge stack and you're going to wrap your rubber band around the middle. All right, and there you have it. An easy to do water sponge ball. Now, join us outside and see what we're going to do with them. Hey guys, we brought some friends and we have our sponges, we have a bucket of water, and now what we're gonna do is have a water fight. Ah! about God is that he's for everyone. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you've said or how you've behaved or how you've acted or what your job is or what family you were born in. It doesn't matter anything. God is for everyone. We're going to look at a story today where God made that known. He is for everyone. Watch along with me. An angel of the Lord told Philip, a disciple of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza, so Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. He was an important official to the Queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to worship in Jerusalem, and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot. So Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, How can I unless someone explains it to me? He invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip sat with him. The official was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shear so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly, and his life is taken away. The official asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah. So Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. Then the official asked the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down into the water. 
and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. The official continued home, and he was very happy. The Ethiopian official knew what the Old Testament prophets had said, but he did not understand that the prophets spoke about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. Isn't that crazy? That God started revealing himself to a man that couldn't understand what he was reading in the Bible? Have you ever done that? Well, you've read the Bible and you're like, I don't totally understand what I'm reading. But God provided somebody else to help him understand. That's what we kind of try to do for you guys. God has allowed us to step in and help you understand. Because at the end of the day, God wants us all to know him. Not just know about him, but to love him and to choose him and to want to hang out with him and to want to follow him. And so we're trying to help you understand what you read and what you hear and what you see because God really is for all of us. Guys, I'm back, I'm back. I have the answer to the question. If you don't remember the question, the question was, why does a seagull fly over the sea? That's a really good question. But the answer is, because if, if it flew over the bay, it'd be a bagel! Oh, that's a good one. Bye, guys! Thanks for joining us for